Welcome back to Stuff No One Told Us About Weight Loss. My name is Eloise and I'm here with Aaron and... Today we've got a bit of a story for you uh, about the weekend, funny enough. Uh, Eloise actually came across something that sort of inspired today's episode and we're going to be sort of talking about how we can relate to that and then also how obviously it can relate to you and if you're trying to lose weight and maybe it might be something to consider. Yes, so recently I was reading an article from Andy Frisella and he made this comment that weekends are 30% of the week and I was reading this and I just (laughs) had one of those like mind-blown moments where I was like, I've never thought about it that way before, you know, and then I was further looking into it and I was like, well, weekends are 30% of the week, meaning they're 30% of the year they're like weekends make up 104 days of the year mm. which is like three months it's actually more than three months of the year it's a pretty you know? long time and most of us think about oh weekends are just time off but it's like we wouldn't take three months in a row off our goals but we would take two days here and there that's right and i feel like it's you know even from when we're sort of a a young kid we're sort of taught that the weekends are you know time to just like chill out and relax and we get caught into this i don't know like a false sense of the weekends are time for me to just you know do whatever i want to do and while that is true with in like a work sense when it comes down to your own personal goals and what you're really working towards uh those are those days are just like any anything else really at the end of it well you can't afford to take two days off every single week you can't afford to take off 104 days of the year and expect to still see the results that you want to see Mm. and you know i think the reason this happens specifically with weight loss is during the week when we're busy and distracted it's like really easy for us to avoid the thoughts that are going on in our heads. And then by the time the weekend rolls around, when we have less sort of work and routine distracting us, it's like all of our thoughts come flooding in and all of a sudden we don't, we can't like cope with that. And so that's why so many of us turn to food because it's like, well, I need a break. I need, you know, I need to soothe my emotions this is usually happening subconsciously, but it happens. And so we turn to like, what can I eat? What treats can I have? That kind of thing. Um, And in addition to that as well, it's usually a result of us following really strict plans and strict rules during the week. So then by the time we get to the weekend, we feel like, wow, I've worked really hard. I really need a break right now. Or wow, I did really well during the week. I deserve to reward myself. Mm. And that's the mindset we get stuck into. And then the weekend tends to become this break from our strict plan that we're following during the week. Mm. Yeah, the weekends tend to get sort of labeled as a, a almost like an escape. You know, we fall into this false lull of living for the weekend. Um, and, you know, I did the same thing. Like I've got a, a bit of an example I can share with when I was working full time as a carpenter, uh, that was very much the case. Like we didn't work on the weekends and you know, you work really hard Monday to Friday. And then by the time the weekend rolls around, like you're a physically exhausted, but also mentally exhausted from everything that's happening. You're not only just working full time, but you're also doing your training. You're also trying to eat well and stuff like this. And the weekend rolls around and there's really nothing set in stone. No, uh, you know, schedule that's outside of your control and it's it's just like a, a free-for-all and we get sort of stuck into this mentality of just having the weekends completely off and then that whole process starts again you know i'll start on monday and unfortunately a lot of people who are often struggling with trying to lose weight or trying to get fit to get into shape uh they often find that the weekends are where they tend to come unhinged And I feel like a lot of that is actually that mindset around treating the weekends as a time off rather than uh, looking at it as an opportunity to still continue with the the routines and keep your your own personal routines going. I think that's really important. Yeah. And, you know, like I said before, I think that mindset of treating the weekends like time off really stems from what we're doing during the week. 
Mm. If you're if you're following a plan during the week that you genuinely love, that you enjoy, that fills up your cup and makes you feel like you're looking after yourself and you're genuinely, you know, feeling good about it, the you won't look for a break on the weekend. Yeah. That's like, right. Bottom line, if you feel like you need a break, it means you need to address what am I doing during the week that's making me feel like I need to take a break? Mm. Because that's really important. You know, we can't just take 104 days off every year and think that, oh, that's going to be fine. Like, and that's not to say that you can't do things differently on the weekends. Because, I mean, we are a great example of that. Like, we do do things differently on the weekends. Yeah. We don't work as much on the weekends. We take time off and we watch TV, like, maybe in a way that we wouldn't normally watch TV or... You know, we will go out and and go places we wouldn't normally go. We will eat food that maybe we don't eat during the week. Not because we're not allowed to eat it during the week, but because we choose to enjoy it on the weekend. Mm. And and that's a big thing. It's like that mindset behind it. Like, we're not just taking the weekend off, but instead we're adjusting the plan so that we enjoy our weekends. That's right. I feel like there's a there's a very um, fine line there, and maybe uh, you know if you're if you're in the boat where things are quite hard, maybe you're falling into the trap that a lot of people do, and they're they're treating the weekend as a time off. So therefore, it's it you get to the weekend and it's kind of like off limits, and that's what Eloise is sort of saying there. And you want to change that mindset and not look at it as just a complete free for all, but you want to have. It's a little bit more flexibility, but you still are in control. You're still in control of, you know, whether you're eating when you're hungry, whether you're stopping when you're satisfied, yeah. of of what you eat and to how much you're eating. You're still in control of that no matter what is going on. Yeah, and I, I think the key is that you still build structure into your weekends. Yeah. So, like, for example, we still plan and we expect our clients to plan on the weekends. You know, we still do our journals on the weekends. We still have some kind of structure to our day because I think when you lose that and you just like, I'll wake up whenever, I'll do whatever during the day, I'll eat whatever, that's when you lose it because you're basically taking the day off. But it's like there are ways where you can still build structure in. You you can still make sure that you are doing the habits that you need to do you know, you're addressing your eating habits. Like you said, you're still planning what you're going to eat. Mm. You're still eating when you're hungry, stopping when you're satisfied. You're still doing things like that, drinking your water. You're still getting yeah. sleep in. Whatever you, whatever is important for your goals, this, there needs to be something going on on the weekends that is still moving you forward. So like I said before, we do things differently on the weekends. We will have takeaway. We will, you know, go to restaurants when we're not in lockdown. Um, We will eat with our families and friends and things like that. But we will plan it and we will still listen to our hunger cues while we're eating that food. Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. I think it's a it's a great time to with the weekends to use it as a bit of a catch up and use it as practice, you know, because one of the things that we find when trying to implement, you know, healthier habits with people and especially during the week is the main objections become around time things with work or they've got commitments with you know their kids and that's it's everything's all happening during the week and then by the weekend rolls around and maybe you know obviously people aren't working on the weekends you've got a little bit more freedom there but it's more of an opportunity when those things aren't imposing on you and you haven't got as many competing demands to still use that as practice to build those habits for yourself. Because then when the next week rolls around, if you've spent the time practicing and implementing those habits consistently, seven days a week, every week you're gonna be improving. Instead Mm -hmm. of you improve for five days or you try as hard as you can, you take two days off, lose your momentum, and then you gotta start again on Monday. Whereas if we use the weekends as a bit of a practice run, Because we don't have those competing demands, it makes it a lot easier to do. Yeah. Or, you know, and we have different demands, right? So it's like a different kind of practice. Mm. We're practicing how we eat. 
with friends. We're practicing how we eat when we're out at restaurants or when we're getting takeaway. Yeah. We're practicing what we do when we're not at work. That's right. And that is a big part of your life. As we've just discussed, it's essentially 30% of your life. It is important to be able to do those things while reaching your goals rather than going, well, I have to eat these specific foods in, you know, during the week and I'm not allowed to go to restaurants and I'm not allowed to eat with family and friends. Um, and so, like, hopefully I'll be able to figure this out while avoiding that stuff. Yeah. That's I, how so many people address it. And it's like, but it's 30% of your life. You can't just avoid that forever. Yeah. I almost feel like it's more important because, as as I sort of mentioned before, like, in during the week, you know, you've, you've got a pretty sort of strict regime already that's going on you've got work and other commitments going on when you've got the weekends you're as always said you're doing different things you might be eating out with friends at restaurants or you're going to houses and you're, you're having a barbecue obviously not in the moment but um when all that stuff is allowed and people who aren't in lockdown <laughs> yeah if you're listening and you're not in lockdown then you know that Good is awesome <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like practicing at those times is going to be much much more important because if we go back to as coaches what are we here when people tend to fall off the bandwagon it's either the weekends which is what we're talking about now yeah they either go on holidays and they just have a bit of a yeah. free free for all which or, is essentially the same as weekend yeah or throughout lockdown you know lo- again everyone's... it's like an extended weekend except you can't go to restaurants and other people's houses that's right <laughs> anytime your routine changes that's yeah. not the normal monday to friday nine to five you know typical routine yeah. that goes on that's going to throw a spanner in the works for you if yeah. you're using the weekends as time off. If you're practicing yeah. it, it's less likely to happen. It's less likely to affect you in such a way. Mm. And one really essential tool that we have that we personally use and we get our clients using is having a journal where every single morning, regardless of what's happening on the day, so regardless of whether it's a work day, regardless of whether you're on holiday at the beach, regardless of whether it's a weekend, you are sitting down and you're making a plan for you, for how you're going to show up for the day. That is, I believe, number one key. Because if you can make that plan for the day, regardless of what's going to happen for the day, then you're telling yourself that, okay, I'm, I'm approaching this from the lens of how am I going to show up for my goals today, regardless of the circumstances, mm. regardless of what's going on in the world around me or what what's on for the day. I'm choosing to do X, Y, Z. Right, And it's about being intentional with those choices rather than trying to fit into a perfect plan for weight loss. Yeah. Because, and this is a massive, massive trap that I see so many people fall into and that I have personally been big on in the past. You know, it's big mistakes that I've made in the past is making decisions from the point of view that this is going to help me lose weight. Therefore, that's why I should do it. This is the biggest mistake you can possibly make. And I say that from personal experience. Because when you approach your week, eating things that you think you should eat for weight loss, exercising in ways you think you should exercise for weight loss, basically doing anything you think that you should do for weight loss without having other reasons, then you're setting yourself up to need a break. Mm. You're setting yourself up to feel like wow, I've worked so hard during the week, I really just deserve to treat myself, right? And the problem is it's because you're not treating yourself and you're not doing things for yourself during the week. That's the important thing because if you're showing up for yourself every single day and you're making decisions, not from how will this help me lose weight, but how will this make me feel better? How will this make me feel like I showed up and looked after myself today? Mm -hmm. How can I show up for others today? You know, what what positive decisions can I make today that my future self will be thankful for? Those reasons you don't need a break from because they genuinely feel good. So when by the time the weekend rolls around, you're not going to be thinking, wow, I need a break from feeling so good all week. (laughs) You're going to be like, well, why wouldn't I just do it again today? That's right. How could I show up for myself today? It's just another day. You keep that momentum going in to the exactly. weekend. Exactly. But it all comes rolling. down to that reason. Like, are you making decisions because it's what you think you should do for weight loss? Or are you making decisions because this is how I'm choosing to look after myself today? This mm-hmm. is how I'm showing up for myself today. There is a massive difference between those two. And 
it really means everything. Like one you need a break from, the other one you don't. One you'll get lasting results for the rest of your life, the other one will be short lived and you'll constantly be needing to get back on track. Yeah. It's it's quite interesting really when you think about it. Both Eloise and myself actually went through an experience that we found this happening time and time again. Like I mean I So many times. To give you some perspective, we used to do a we worked with a coach who was very strict on, you know, you have to have this specific uh, diet, you know, yeah. don't eat anything off the plan in order to achieve these goals. Yes, it was an extreme measure, but that's what they kind of did. Well, also at the time, we didn't really know any better. Well, exactly. And we were, we were kind of gravitating that because we were just focusing on physical results yeah. um, and doing it for the reasons of that. So like Eloise was just mm-hmm. saying, if you're doing it for the reasons purely for weight loss and for a physical result, so you feel better about maybe what you see in the mirror or how much you weigh, etc. cetera. They're, they're kind of the wrong reasons. Yeah. yeah. If it's just purely that, it'll set you up for feeling like you need a break. Yeah. And that was the same with us. You know, we would go Monday to Friday, sticking to this meal plan rigidly. And then Saturday was our weigh-in check-in day. So we'd go in, he would weigh us, he would check our body fat measurements. We'd, we'd get all those measurements and then he'd punch it into the computer, make some diet adjustments, and then we'd go for the next week. And but actually what we did was go to the Vic market <laughs> and treat ourselves because we felt like we needed a break. Yeah. All we, or we of. needed a treat for doing so well. Or it would be like, oh, we've weighed in. Like, wow, we did we did awesome this week. We worked so hard this week. Like, we deserve a Lamborek. Yeah, that's right. And that's what we did. <laughs> We'd go to uh, the, the Vic market and get a spicy Lamborek. Really good, by the way. Um, but at well, the time, yeah. it felt like it... it For the first time ever, I felt kind of like it was compelling me. Like I really, really wanted. I was looking forward to just getting that uh, that feel good result. Like, yep, I'd worked really hard, and then I deserved the the you know treat, which was the the lamborette. It rarely ended there. Rarely did we then go home and eat on our plan again. It was more like, all right, now like we're gonna get a roll from the bakery, or we're gonna go get Chinese takeaway. Yeah, none of which was on our plan at the time. No, that's right. But like, here's here's the bottom line, like. If you're not allowed to eat takeaway or a spicy lamb barrack from the Vic market when you want one, like, sorry, but you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Like, that is, the plan is going wrong somewhere here because, like, and, and the way that we do it now and the way that we teach our clients is, like, you plan what you want to eat, but you get to put whatever you want on that plan. That's right. You're making the plan for what you genuinely we will want to eat today not making a plan for what's going to cause weight loss today. Mm. It's what do I genuinely want to eat today? Put it on the plan. Like allow yourself to eat foods that you enjoy because then once you eat foods that you enjoy anytime you want, they cease to be something that you need to take a break with Mm. or treat yourself with because it's like you can have it whenever you want. There's, There's no allure to them anymore they're not as attractive when you're just allowed to have them all the time right it Um, puts you back in the driver's seat yeah and it puts you in control and especially when you're going into the weekends like that's when you need to be in control the most because if you just sort of go through and you're mindlessly eating or you're Mm. mindlessly snacking you're not really thinking you're just doing things on a whim that's out of control there's also a lot more temptations during the weekend typically Mm. right typically you're with people on the weekends you wouldn't normally be with or you're out at places you wouldn't normally be out at. And so there's more like temptation. And so you need to learn how to deal with that and still enjoy yourself. Cause we, we would never say don't enjoy yourself, but it's like, how can you do that while also achieving your goals? It's very possible to eat out at places and eat delicious foods all the time and still reach your goals. Yeah. But it's like, it always comes back to, and this is an interesting thing people often ask, you know, well, but if I just put all this food on my plan that I really enjoy eating, how could I ever lose weight? Yeah. And the answer is you put the food on your plan, but you still follow your hunger signals. So you can put the spicy lamb on your plan, but you eat it if you're hungry. If you're not hungry, you save it for later. Yeah. And while you're eating it, you're paying attention to, wow, this is delicious. Am I still hungry after I'm halfway through? Do I still want to finish this? 
or do I want to eat half now, decide I'm satisfied, and then eat the other half tomorrow or later on or whatever, or share it with me if it's Aaron eating it. <laughs> um, it's definitely quite interesting, yeah. and it, it sort of removes that that feeling like you need a reward or you need to eat a certain food or, you know, that... Specific foods is a big one. Yeah, that, that feeling of like, oh, you know, if I'm around, like bad food then i'm gonna just like overindulge and it takes no that control it takes yeah. that completely away yeah. because like for the first time ever you feel like i'm in control of everything i'm doing here i don't yeah. feel like i'm gonna go off the rails i don't feel like i'm gonna be tempted to do something i don't want to do because all the while you're building that skill with yourself if you use the weekends as you know a catch-up time and a good time to practice these habits you're every time you practice it and every time you do it you're building that skill yeah. And eventually that skill is going to be so refined that you're completely in control of your mm. results. Exactly. And at the end of the day, like we always say, weight loss really comes down to listening to your hunger signals and eating less than your body needs. So when eating when you're hungry and stopping at the point of satisfied, which is before you feel physically full, regardless of what food you're, gonna, you're eating, you're going to start losing weight if you're doing that. And that is a really key concept and the reason why this works so well, you know, because you can enjoy food and lose weight. You know, there's no reason that you need to overeat food anymore because you can have it whenever you want. Like a lot of overeating is driven by the fact that, oh, I, I have to I have to eat all of this now because I'll go back to my plan tomorrow and I won't be allowed to eat it anymore. Yeah. So once it's allowed... There's no reason to overeat it anymore because you could have it tomorrow again if you want to. Mm. You know, it's it's a very, very... Well, it was a life-changing concept for me when I learned that because I've spent pretty much my whole life thinking I need to eat certain foods and spending a lot of time making sure I'm eating certain foods and then realizing that, wow, I feel like I can't eat foods I enjoy and then when I do eat foods I enjoy... I overindulge like crazy because I feel like, well, I've got to eat it all now because I won't be eating it tomorrow when I'm back on plan. And one other point that I want to make as well. So I think a lot of people tend to overemphasize the importance of enjoying food and not that you can't enjoy food. Like we've spent a lot of time on this podcast talking about how you can enjoy food. Perfectly fine. The problem becomes, it becomes a problem when you're spending so much time thinking about how you can enjoy food and you know how you can take a break on the weekend and enjoy your food that you're forgetting to actually enjoy your life Mm -hmm. and i think this is a massive thing that we talk about in our program that i've personally worked on myself is thinking about like why do i have such a need to find enjoyment in food again this isn't saying you can't enjoy food it's just an interesting question to ask yourself how about instead of spending so much time thinking about how you can eat whatever you want on the weekends think about how can i enjoy the weekend without food that's right how can i spend time with people that i want to spend time with and really connect with them how can i do activities that i really enjoy how can i really look after myself this weekend or do something that's relaxing or rejuvenating me for the week ahead without food because once you are able to do that once you are able to actually enjoy your life food loses its power and I think that's something that so many of us never think about it's something that I never thought about myself until I started questioning well if I don't get to eat xyz on the weekend well I'm not going to enjoy my weekend okay, there's something you need to look at there. Mm. It's building up that anticipation. Yeah, like why Mm. am I putting so much emphasis on getting to eat this specific meal? Like that's a sign to me that I need to look at my life and how I'm living my life and go, well, what can I edit in my life to not need the food so much? You can still eat the food, but it's like it's an interesting question to ask yourself. Why does food hold so much importance for you around enjoyment? It's a big one that a lot of our a lot of our clients speak about. Um, as I said, I've personally worked on a lot. So, guys, we unpacked a lot in today's episode. 
uh, the major point was that, um, you know, obviously the weekends, you don't want to treat it as just a time off. Mm. You know, we want to just obviously keep that momentum rolling. Yeah. Be in the driver's seat on the weekend, like plan out your weekends. Like it doesn't have to be down to the minute, but like just have some sense of what you're doing and, and keep reminding yourself that you are in control. Don't just completely go free for all. And then Monday rolls around and you go like, oh shit, what happened on the weekend? Yeah. Everything's just turned to water. And if you feel the need to take a break or, you know, have a free for all on the weekend, if you're really feeling the drive to do that, let's look at what are you doing during the week? Yeah. Why do you need, why do you have such a big need to take a break on the weekend? Yeah. What can we edit in your plan during the week that makes taking a break irrelevant? Yeah, that just makes your life in general a bit more enjoyable so that you're not just living for the weekends. Yeah. Um, because, because that's really important yeah. for sustainability. If you're going to do this for a long period of time and keep the results, you want it to be enjoyable. You don't want to be yeah. just constantly living for the weekend. Then the weekend rolls around and then you've got to try and fi- undo what you did on the weekend. Yeah. Um, it's a cycle a lot of people are stuck in. So, guys, thanks so much for listening and we will see you next time.